not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. After completing training, these soldiers could travel to Western Russia and then engage in combat against the Ukrainian military. My first question is, why is Korea getting involved? And it's crazy how the U.S. is influential in all of this. Yeah, we gotta get Trump in there ASAP. Uh, Man. Taking days off at levels, not seen. I hear she's taking another one tomorrow or something. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Maybe she knows something we don't know. That's bad, right? Maybe she knows something we don't know. Does everybody understand that? Maybe, maybe. Hey, Trump got away with words. He got away with letting you know that things are gonna be a-okay. Y'all better stop paying attention. Hey guys, check out this amazing video of a UFO flying over Brazil in 2024 of July 27th. Check it out guys, amazing video <clears throat> taken in two different parts of Brazil. Basically, two different people recording two different videos of the same ship from two different places. I believe this is one of the best videos ever recorded on social media. The quality of the video is absolutely amazing and crystal clear. It kind of reminds me of the Turkey UFO sighting, which people claim was one of the clearest UFO sightings ever. Whatever this is, it's simply amazing. And it happens to be some type of flying saucer or diamond-shaped UFO. I've seen hundreds of videos throughout the internet, but I have to say this is one of the best videos so far for 2024. What do you guys think? Don't forget to share, repost, and also comment, guys. I wanna know what you guys think. Thanks for watching my video. Is it me, or do these aliens upgrade the model of these spaceships like cars? Because what is that? The 2024 model? Because that's not the traditional way a UFO is supposed to look. It's supposed to look something like this. So I don't know. Y'all tell me. I think Vice President Harris supports a future for this country where these freedoms and many others will be protected and upheld. And here to tell you much more about that, President Barry Barack Satoro. Obama. You know, I've, I have done a lot of rallies, so I don't usually get nervous. But I was feeling some kind of way following Eminem. Now, notice my palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. I don't know about y'all, but this is cringe. I'm with him. That's it. <laughs> we got a president rapping. Clearly, he's black. I'm with him. I don't know about you guys. Sign me up. Sorry, Trump. Don't care about anything happening with the economy. I'm black, and I heard a rap. That's all it takes. We're back. We're so back. We are so back, black men. Did you hear him? The flow? It was crazy. It was crazy. You better. You guys know what to do. You know what to do. Two weeks away from the election, you go be black and vote for whoever can drop the most bars. And uh, brothers... Brothers, you gotta go out there and do what you gotta do. Candace is funny. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> Today, I'm prepared to share what we know at this stage. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into Eastern Russia. We assess that these soldiers traveled by ship from the Wonsan area in North Korea to Vladivostok, Russia. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia where they are currently undergoing training. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military, 
but this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. After completing training, these soldiers could travel to Western Russia and then engage in combat against the Ukrainian military. My first question is, why is Korea getting involved? And it's crazy how the U.S. is influential in all of this. Yeah, we gotta get Trump in there ASAP. Man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be, he has to be eliminated. Well, there's no way that can be misconstrued. We all know what you mean by eliminated. Look, are they a threat to democracy? Yes. Are they going to take our rights away? Yes. Well, first off, we're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic, so fucking jot that down. Second, no rights are being taken away. I know everybody's going to refer to abortion, abortion. All he said was, leave it up to the states. It's up to them to decide for themselves. As it fucking should be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. Uh, you're fucking wrong. Dictators were people like the dude in the 30s and 40s with the funny little mustache who painted shitty pictures, uh, Joseph Stalin, Lenin, Pol Pot, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, Kim Jong-un, his fucking dad who apparently invented burritos. These were people who were dictators. It's really actually shameful. Enemies of the state. Wrong again. What's really shameful is making tens of millions of dollars off shady insider deals with your inflatable husband and giving the green light for mobs to go and rob shit during riots. You're still gonna have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Oh my God, can you imagine if somebody on the right said that shit about Kamala? And speaking of that <laughs> fucking psycho, check this clip out. Does one of us have to come out alive? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if y'all ain't put two and two together with her saying things like that and other people that's on that side saying things like that following the last two attempts on that man's life, y'all sleep. You gotta be sleep. We know what's going on. What, what do you think the world will be like uh, in a second, a second uh, term? With with president with the president Trump second term? A lot of people. I, are... I, I know what it'll be like if we let her in. Yeah. Oh really? And that ain't good. Yeah. Miserable track record. Right. Appalling right. track record. No. no policies to speak yeah. of. And the border, right? And she's got the IQ of a fence post. <laughs> the IQ of a fence post is crazy. I have to tell you that after a very careful review of all the arguments that were made for people on both sides of this uh, equation, I came to a place where I believe there under the law, resentencing is appropriate. What that means in this particular case is that we are going to recommend to the court that the life without the possibility of parole be removed and that they will be sentenced for murder, which, because there are two murders involved, that will be 50 years to life. However, because of their age, under the law, since they were under 26 years of age, at the time that these crimes occurred, they will be eligible for parole immediately. I have to tell you know what? I find that funny that an innocent man, Marcellus Williams, who was just recently executed, couldn't get clemency. But yet these guys, and I remember this case vividly, who were proven guilty to have unalived his, their parents get a chance at parole some justice system that we have man hey listen y'all want to know something i'm really tired of i'm really tired of people saying trump racist without no proof i'm tired of it because my thing is how trump wasn't racist before he ran for president everybody loved him but now all of a sudden he 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 become president and he's so racist where the racism come from the man had a black girlfriend for three years and i ain't saying i ain't saying that don't, that don't mean it but listen if he was going to be racist and deal with a black lady, he would have dealt with her in private. He would have just hunched on her, just like Thomas Jefferson did. This man had a public black girlfriend, a public relationship with a black girl. That don't mean, that, that, that don't scream racism. When Nelson Mandela was free from prison in 1994 and wanted to, to come to America, the government wouldn't pay for it, so guess who chartered their own private jet? Trump. Uh, guess who helped fund the Black Panther Party? According to David Tillman, which is the co-founder of the Black Panther Party, Trump helped Trump helped fund that. So if if he was so racist, why would he be dealing with these? Or why would he dealt with Nelson Mandela? Why would he dealt with the Black Panther Party? 
why we have a black girlfriend in public if he was so racist? Where did the racism come from? Because I remember growing up, everybody black loved Trump. Everybody loved Trump. Now all of a sudden, he racist and, and, and nobody can stand him? Like, come on, make it make sense. But y'all will excuse everything Creepy Joe has said. Joe called us the N-word. Joe said he don't want his kids in, in a racial jungle. But y'all say people can change. This man showed you he was racist. Kamala showed you she ain't stunned our black asses. And y'all said it talking about this man. The question in 13 days will be what do the American people want? Thank you. Bro, sometimes I have a hard time believing that that audio is from that actual video. But if it is, man, yeah, yeah, she's cooked. My issue was more of uh, the energy. I've been paying 2100 since I first opened up. In the last seven months, it shot up to 15000 What? Sheesh, I would have said what too? 15000 Well, I may not be quick to have the answer as soon as you ask it about a specific policy issue sometimes because I'm going to want to research it. I'm going to want to study it. I'm kind of a nerd sometimes, <laughs> I confess. So cringe, man. So cringy. Wow. Y'all know the internet fucking lying. How the hell you spell 12? Ain't no fucking way that shit spelled T-W-E-L-F-T-H. I know like fuck there was never no F <coughs> up in 12. Am I fucking tripping or is some shit going down? Huh? Help me out here. Nah. <laughs> nah, they switched it up, y'all. We went broke. We went, we, yep, they saying that it's 12. It's not 12. Oh my God, bro. We definitely had another Mandela effect. Something that small, though. That's crazy. See, they do it in small things that we won't notice until like a video like this or something comes out. This is crazy. Yo, watch this. Watch Trump's reaction to Tulsi's announcement. The Republican Party and bring it back to the party of the people and the party of peace. But I'm proud to stand here with you today, President Trump, and announce that I'm joining the Republican Party. This rate, it ain't gonna be no more Democrats. Just independent and Republicans. Cause uh yeah, the Democrats are failing miserably at this point. What is going on with Eminem in this photo? Do you notice something strange going on here in this photo? Or is it just me? And this is for entertainment purposes only. I'm just sharing a photo of Eminem that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. This is for entertainment purposes only. But you tell me what is going on here with this photo. Something ain't right. Almost as if Eminem could be a you know what, if you know, you know. I can't really say what I want to say. But if you know, you know. Let's just say... He might be a little bit on the green side of things. <laughs> if you know, you know. Again, I'm just sharing a photo. That's all I'm doing. What do you think is going on here? Something definitely ain't right. I definitely see some serpent eyes, but it's all just speculation at this point. Y'all, the Amish. The Amish. And probably the Mennonites too. I would say Mennonites let me know, but Mennonites probably ain't got TikTok. But if it's a Mennonite secretly on TikTok, let me know. The Amish are voting for the first time in wild numbers. The Amish have Trump flags on their buggies. Horses, horse drawn buggies are flying Trump flags. Like, Y'all have got to see what's happening. The Amish, the Amish been gave up on society. The Amish been gave up on this world. And they have had enough. Even they are so impacted by this world that they are suiting and booting up, 
putting on their ties and their overcoats and getting in their horse-drawn buggies and going down to vote for Donald Trump. The Amish. What more do y'all need to know? This is so, I'm, I'm so glad to be a white man. I'm proud to be a white man because I couldn't imagine being a black woman right now, being so bamboozled, so fooled, actually going down there and voting for that lady. She's not going to get more. She's going to get a few million votes, y'all. A few million votes. And to, I guess to y'all, that's going to be a lot. And y'all going to, I don't know what y'all going to think when this, when this all plays out. But the few million people who are actually going to vote for this woman, like, y'all are just so bamboozled. I don't get it. Y'all are the same. Y'all are y'all just, I'm, I'm tired of trying to psychologize y'all at this point. Like, it, it, y'all just like to lose. Yeah, that's crazy that the Amish, the people who have, like, really, like, cut themselves off from society is voting for Trump. You don't even think they even get into all that type of stuff. But man, I'm trying to tell y'all. It's sealed and it's in the bag. The only way he doesn't win is if something catastrophic happens on election day. We are called to be watchmen on the wall, to be spiritually discerning, to look out into the spiritual dimension and see the attack that is coming. It is not coming, my friends. It is here. Are we going to sound the alarm? Okay, we're seeing spiritual attacks happening in our schools. Are we going to sound the alarm? We're seeing them happening on county boards. Are we going to sound the alarm? We're seeing it happen in legislation. Are we going to sound the alarm? We're seeing it happen all over the public arena. Are we going to sound the alarm? The spiritual battle is not on its way, my friends. The spiritual battle is here. We have all the weapons and all the armor. All we have to do is engage. Now's the time for those of you who are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now is the time to engage in the battle that we proclaim through song and through liturgy and through intercession. Now's the time to put it to action. Hey, that's why y'all can't be falling for the banana in the tailpipe, man. The underlying effects of this small print, man, going on this election is so fucking wild. Like we get to a point if you're not paying attention, they know you're not paying attention. They know they can go over your head. They know most only paying attention to rhetoric and the narrative that's at hand. But this fine print shit here, like this the shit you gotta go looking for. Like you really gotta dig. Even though it's online, it's not gonna be online until there's people who out there who need and, and got feel the need that we need to know this shit too. This shit wild, man. Mix this with the Project 2025 bullshit and you got a recipe for destruction. It's sad that most of these young people thinking that you're gonna get some money because you dr- vote for Trump. Not knowing you only got that money because it was a pandemic and Trump didn't give you shit. Both sides fucked. This shit here, wow, man. Y'all better wake up. We voting for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris? Are you kidding? (laughs) Kamala Harris. Why are we voting for Kamala Harris? She talks about what we've lived. I'm an educator some 40 years. I grew up a middle class kid. And what we've lived is lifting people up not tearing them down. What was your favorite accomplishment of hers as Vice President of the United States? As Vice President of the United States, she was bold enough to go to the border and tell people to stay home. Do not come. Ah, people forget that. (laughs) Let me just say this, all black people ain't black. No way. Telling them not to come, uh, that is seemingly more of a sore subject when it comes to this administration worst border crisis in American history under this administration. What do you wow, think? and more inf- misinformation. And from you. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think that was misinformation. The Biden, it is. The Biden administration inherited that border crisis. You remember the one that Trump said that he was going to build a big wall? I think he made it about five feet. <laughs> Why do they all laugh like that? <laughs> for context i know you can't see the whole screen but what it says is bishop exposes the truth behind abortion and how it's used to destroy the black population when it comes to things like preaching against abortion the slaughter of the unborn nothing is more racist in america than the abortion industry i think that the number one voice against abortion should be the black preacher, and and let me tell you why. Not because it's more wrong for black people than it is for whites or others, but because we're targeted. African-Americans make up 
13% of the nation's population. Our black women make up 8%, but our ovulating women make up about 3 to 4%. 3 to 4% of the population of America. It That's a lot. That means black people are having babies like crazy, right? And they're having babies at a higher rate than any other race. And if you look up Margaret Sanger, right? If you know, you know. This right here falls right in line with what this black man is saying. Responsible for almost 40% of the nation's abortions. But there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a, a mother come out of that clinic I don't know her. I never met her. I may never see her again. But she gave a thumbs up and she kept her baby. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Accepting, bringing a life into this world and going through whatever it is you may have to go through and seeing it all the way through. This country where, you know what? I got so many, I don't look at comments about myself, but I. I I was looking up some co comments about my grief podcast and I came across this whole inundation from people who are Harris supporters saying to me online today, like, how dare you? What a betrayal that you would ask her these questions. No, and I'm like, job. you misunderstand what my job is. I'm not on MSNBC or and I'm no disrespect. They, what they do is they're very talented, but uh, it's I don't watch it. I'm not interested in watching what these overpaid blow dried anchors think. And I include myself in that overpaid blow dry, although I don't blow dry, um, I am overpaid. But I don't want, the, I'm not interested in the anchor's opinion. I'm interested in facts and letting the viewers make up their own minds. So anyway, I'm sorry if this devolved into something. I gotta tell you that this election is unlike any other election, okay? This is not politics as usual. As we are finding out, as we're on the road, the people you think are gonna vote for a certain candidate may not be, as evidence in this interview, watch. Your feelings, and I, uh, let me start with the women here, about Kamala Harris. She's a woman of color. I'm not putting her down because of that, and I'm not putting her down because she's a woman. I'm not a feminist, so I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I don't think that she has the personality. I don't think that she has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. I don't want to be... Y'all know Don Lemon don't like this at all. Because my president is scared. I want my president to feel secure and manly and about it. We brought up gender, right? Like, do you think yeah. it matters that she's a woman and people aren't comfortable having a woman in a top leadership role? No, no I don't no. think that because most men, they, they love their mothers, they love their wives. So yeah. as a woman, most men, they respect the woman, but she just don't have the qualification or the education to really run America because she don't have the experience. She don't understand our struggles. And for me to believe you for another four years, you're crazy. Right. Like you're crazy. You're saying the same thing that you said four years ago. Again. So the fact that she's the vice president That's to just you the is bottom honest, line. You're like, you've been here, you've had a chance. Yes. Well, for me, the very first time I ever heard the name Kamala Harris, it was an association to locking up parents for a truancy. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I, I ever heard of her name. And I, I really didn't understand how this person claims to be a black woman, but yet she's locking up black women and black men and separating families. This is a thing that is, Trump talks about this a lot. He says, you know, Kamala Harris became black right. when it was mm -hmm. convenient. Right. Yeah. Can you? Can you talk to me about, do you feel, do you agree with him on that? Do you feel oh, like she's wearing her blackness? Absolutely. She sworn into the, when she sworn to the Senate, it was as the first Indian American. Thank you. Which is, it's fine. We don't care. We all know she's not black. Let's understand that. We, we are all clear of that. But well, my that point of view is, like I told you earlier, she's already been there. She's in office right now. Wow. Well, there you go. What do you think? Let me know. See, the problem is a lot of people hate the fact that people are seeing through all of the bull crap. And y'all, let's just be honest. We know the Dems, they see it too, but they gonna ride this out. They gonna fight it until they can't fight it no more.
what we have representing our country as the United States of America can be one or two things right now. A billionaire, older white man who has been known to not care about the black community. Correct. Or a black woman, a woman of color, even if you don't if take the word <laughs> black away, we'll go no, woman no. of color. We got to stay with black. Okay, and we're going to talk about why. Okay, but I'm saying it can't if, be woman if, of color. For the rest of the representation, for the rest of the world to look at the United States of America okay. and the pageantry that we represent, mm -hmm. what would be a better choice of identity in pageantry than a white man that's all about money? And, and told us that he cares nothing about us, but cares about him. He's, that's the pageantry. Okay. Or a woman that has at least, and just, just start a woman okay. that at least shows that she has some sense of compassion, empathy for the people of the United States of America. Stay right there. You said a woman who shows that she has some compassion for the people of the United States of America. Right. But this is the same woman who said America is not a racist country. This is the same woman who said, I'm not going to do anything that's going to only benefit black people while she sat in office and watched President Joe Biden pass an anti-Asian hate bill, anti-Asian hate executive order, Native American executive order, LGBTQ executive order, and law. So how can Kamala Harris, the so-called black woman, say that I can't do anything just for black people, but you sat in the White House for four years with President Biden and watched him take care of specific groups of non-white people and you didn't demand one thing for your own black people that you claim to be a part of now again because those are a lot of semantics in the sense because I, we, we've heard this argument before she could say the, a lot of that stuff is taken out of context a lot of the, the process of when she's saying she wants to do things for all people and not just black people specifically we also know that that bill the the asian hate bill is actually uh, a bill that is for all no it's not first of all if you're a black person why wouldn't you want to do something for black people specifically this is not taking anything away from anybody else in the country but if you can go do these same things for asians the lgbtq community why not black people why i mean i i, I it's Read a long it. bill Read it. yeah. it's not for everybody they only discuss asian and pacific islander hate in the covid 19 hate crimes bill it is not for everybody it is for asians and pacific islanders I, okay and, and that's, I, well I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna leave it here. I've really already said what I had to say. So there's no need for me to continue talking about it at the end of this video. But I will say this, white people, I love you. I love you with all my heart because a, a lot of y'all support this channel. And I know there's a sprinkle of black people in here, in here. And I'm gonna be honest, some of my black people don't even like the fact that I make this channel to where I invite both colors. Some of them be like, oh, brother, you tripping. I'm up out of here. That's cool, man. It just tells me that you want me to be a racist, a divider. I don't want to be a divider, bro. It's, that, that's just not me. That's not how I was raised. I grew up watching my dad, who actually picked cotton in Mississippi, be cool and be good friends with white people. So I don't know how to be hateful towards white people. Even when I've experienced racism with certain white people, I still don't put that on all white people. And I told y'all, I know y'all hate when I make this channel about race, but the thing is that if you can't stomach me, a black man, talking about racism, you need to look in the mirror. You have a problem. You need to go fix yourself. If it burns you up, you have a demon spirit in you that is bothered, that is bothered by the truth because we cannot, and I mean cannot, and this gets me emotional, we cannot keep denying the disadvantage my people had in this country. But now we're all feeling the same, the same type of things that my people have been feeling all their lives. We, we, we're, everybody's feeling it. We, we were feeling it way before this because we had to learn how to survive during these things. When, when, when the heat was turned up high on us since the beginning. But like I said, there are white people who are in the hoods with us that grew up in the hoods, who probably aren't in the hoods anymore, that's probably doing good, that know that struggle. 
I don't look at all white people and say, oh, he's a racist. He don't know where I'm from. He don't know nothing about what I've been through. You can't say that about all white people, bro. I am a witness to this, right? But it's crazy how we live in a world of division and how I have to skip around certain words or certain issues to try to satisfy certain people. Oh, I'm out of here, man. I can't do this. Why? Why? Because I'm talking about the truth? Nah, 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 nah. If you were really who you say you are, you're a good person and you really have a good heart, you would stay here and listen to this. I'm not putting anybody on blast, but I'm just saying this stuff exists. And you hear me talk about the shortcomings of black people and how we need to get together and stop murdering and killing each other. If black people can sit up here and act like black on black crime don't exist, but it does. My uncle was a victim of black on black crime. My cousin was a victim of black on black crime. I've watched this growing up my whole life. So hearing people say that it don't exist is crazy to me. It's crazy. The moment you try to shoot that other black man, you have a choice. You can say, you know what? I ain't going to do that. Nah, bro. Nah, it's, it's, it's love, bro. I love you. I ain't going to do that to you. What happened to you's and these? Because I was taught that when you use these, you live to fight another day. But that's not today's day. So I can sit up here. When I talk about these issues, I'm not being biased. I am the most unbiased channel you'll ever see. And a lot of channels stay away from this type of stuff because they're scared of losing followers or losing, you know, views. And that's not why I do this. I want, I, I hope to one day get a lot of subscribers and, and a lot of views, but I want it to be built on principles and built on believing and standing on something. I stand on what I believe in and I'm gonna do that whether you want me to talk about black issues or not, or whether you want me to link black and white people together or not, I'm gonna stand on that. I don't care if you two come to me and offer me $50 million and say, hey man, We'll give you this if you join the club and stop talking about those issues. I'm going to say no. No, I'm not going to do it because my integrity and nobody's going to change that. Even the people that get uncomfortable when I talk about things. Like that. But this is why we need Trump, because Trump can bridge that gap. If he levels a playing field and we get the opportunities to everyone else, the same opportunities, and our community still fails, then guess who we got to blame? Us. Us. It was never the white people. But hey, I can rant, but I won't. And with that being said, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all of my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person. And hey, go check out my last video too. Run it up, right here.